Hey guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about cannabidiol, or what is commonly known as CBD, and whether or not it's actually worth the hype. So, let's get right into it. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for evidence and research in the field of nutrition. Uh, if you haven't already, I would definitely recommend hitting the red subscribe button below this video so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. So before we get going in today's video, I think it's very, very important for us to understand two different things before we get into actually some of the research behind CBD. And those two things are one, what CBD actually is, and then two, how it interacts with the body. And so once we talk about those two things real quick, uh, we're going to dive into some of the latest research on CBD and see if it actually holds up to all the hype. So CBD, as alluded to earlier, simply stands for cannabidiol, and cannabidiol is one of over a hundred different cannabinoids uh, that are found in the cannabis plant. And now the cannabinoids are actually the compounds in cannabis that have and hold some of the medicinal properties. Now the most famous cannabinoids are obviously CBD and THC, and they get a lot of the hype simply because they compose most of the different cannabinoids that are in the cannabis plant. Now we really don't know a ton about about uh, the other cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant simply because up until about two years ago, cannabis was actually considered a schedule one drug, which actually made it illegal to not only consume, but in most cases actually to compose studies on in a research setting. Now, with that being said, there are uh, a handful of studies that have been performed in human trials. And so for the sake of this video, we're really going to try to focus on those in particular, simply because a lot of the rat studies that have been performed uh, a lot of times don't translate extremely well into a human setting uh, or a clinical setting. So we're really going to try to stick to the trials that have been performed in human clinical trials. So the second thing we really need to understand before we get into some of these trials is how CBD interacts in the body. Now CBD primarily uh, interacts with a neurotransmitter system within the body known as the endocannabinoid system. And that endocannabinoid system is made up primarily of two receptors, one of which being the CB1 receptor and the other being the CB2 receptor. Now there are other receptors in the endocannabinoid system, but we really don't understand them very much at this time. So again, for the sake of this video, we're really going to focus on the CB1 and CB2 receptor and how CBD interacts with those receptors in the body to exert its medicinal properties. So in the endocannabinoid system, in the absence of CBD and THC and these other cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant, your body actually actually produces its own um, cannabinoid, so to speak, called anandamide. Now, anandamide gets released uh, actually in your body when uh, you are doing like a an intense workout. Anandamide gets released in response to that, and it also gets released in response to things like achievement and setting goals and then actually reaching those goals. Now, the CB1 receptor is actually found more so in the brain brain and the central nervous system um, and actually responds a little bit more so to THC than to CBD. And the CB1 receptor is what gets stimulated by THC and exerts those psychoactive properties that THC is typically known for. Now the CB2 receptors are actually found more so in the peripheral nervous system and even in places like the immune system. Um, and so when these receptors uh, get activated more so by CBD than THC, you see some of the effects that CBD exerts in the body. 
Now it is important to understand and to note here uh, that there is something called the entourage effect where, uh, like I said, there are over a hundred cannabinoids in cannabis that interact with the endocannabinoid system that we really don't fully understand yet. And something that we really see a lot when people are consuming cannabis, there is this entourage effect where when you consume all of the cannabinoids together as opposed to consuming them in isolation, like consuming CBD in isolation or even consuming THC in isolation, you just don't see the same effects as when someone consumes all of the cannabinoids together. And this actually leads me to believe that a lot of the cannabinoids that we even haven't identified yet also have some medicinal properties to them. Now, with that being said, I think it's time for us to dive into some of the research and to see what some of the researchers are saying and what we actually have good solid proof on what CBD does in the body and does to us. Now, one of the first and most well-known and well-backed effects of CBD on the body um, and one of its primary uses is actually in its use to combat seizures. Now, in this study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2018, showed that there was actually a 42% reduction in the amount of seizures of patients that regularly were having those seizures. Now, there are a couple of things that are worth noting about the study. One is the sample size that was used. There were over 200 participants in this study, which makes the sample size for a trial like this very, very large, which means that this uh, study has a large degree of reliability to it. Now, the second thing that we need to note about this study um, is the dosage that is used, and this is actually very, very key. Now, the dosage that was used in this study is the equivalent of almost 200 milligrams per dose for the individuals that were in this study. And now for any of you that actually consume CBD, you'll actually know that is a very, very high dose of CBD. Now, the reason I think it's so important to point that out is because of the economic reality of consuming that much CBD on a monthly basis. So for most of the products that are on the market, you're looking at spending roughly $100 per 1,000 milligrams of CBD. And so if you do the math on that, you're looking at spending over $1,000 per month on consuming CBD. And so for most people, that just isn't economically realistic. Now that's not to say that CBD wasn't effective. It's just that the dose that's required to be effective for those individuals just again isn't economic for most people. Now the reason that CBD exerts these effects on the body and actually lowers the occurrence of seizures isn't very well known. But the theory is uh, that it's actually interacting with a couple of different um, receptors in the body and actually raising the threshold of stimulation for certain neurons in the body that cause these seizures. And so when you raise the threshold of stimulation, it lowers the occurrence of overstimulation, which a lot of these seizures are coming from. Now, the second most likely use for CBD in a clinical setting is probably gonna be its use in combating anxiety. Now, this study that was published in 2017 in the Frontiers of Pharmacology pointed out that almost 80% of the participants in the study actually saw a reduction in the level of anxiety when exposed to a public speaking test. Now the sample size in this study was actually pretty decent, but again, the huge thing to point out here is the dosage that was used in this study in particular. Now they split the study group into three different groups. They gave one group 100 milligrams before a speaking test, one group 300 milligrams, and then they gave another group 900 milligrams. And what they found was that only the group that received 300 milligrams actually noticed a reduction in anxiety when exposed to the speaking test. Now the reason this is important is because it kind of shows that CBD has this 
uh, threshold that has to be met um, in order for it to exert its medicinal properties in the body. And then after that threshold is met, it almost seems as if there is a reduction in its effectiveness. Now, 300 milligrams as a threshold of a dose is fairly high and so again the reason i wanted to point this out is that both of the studies and you'll find this across the literature that the quantity that is being used in these studies is fairly high and again for most people going to be very economically unrealistic. Now, again, the reason as to why CBD lowers anxiety really isn't that well understood, uh, but it is thought that CBD also interacts with a very specific subset of serotonin receptors in the body. And when it interacts with this receptor and activates it, it almost acts as serotonin. And so for those of you that are familiar with serotonin as a neurotransmitter in the body, know know uh, that serotonin is a very calming neurotransmitter. And so when this receptor gets activated in the body, it can almost mimic the effects of serotonin to such a degree uh, that it lowers anxiety that the individual consuming CBD might be experiencing. Now, the third most common use of CBD is going to be in the management of pain. Now, this study that was published in the Clinical Rehabilitation Journal in 2003 found that, and I quote, pain relief associated with both THC and CBD was significantly superior to placebo. But I do think it's worth noting a very, very big caveat in this study as well as the other studies that have been performed on CBD, and that is that they are co-founded with the consumption of either one THC or to a full spectrum extract. Now, if you'll remember from the beginning of the video, uh, there are over a hundred cannabinoids that are found in cannabis. And so this study in particular used a combination of CBD and THC, whereas other studies that have been conducted on pain have used a full spectrum CBD extract, meaning that they are low in THC, uh, but also contain all the other cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant. And the reason this is important to note is because we don't have any research whatsoever in human populations that CBD in isolation is actually effective in treating pain and chronic pain. But what you do see is that CBD in conjunction with other cannabinoids, including THC, is very effective at treating certain types of pain. And this actually brings me to one of my final points, and that is if you're going to be consuming CBD, from the research that we have in human trials, it's probably very likely that CBD is most effective only when consumed with the other cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant. Now, if you are someone like me who is intentionally trying to avoid the intoxicating and psychoactive effects of THC, you can find full spectrum CBD extracts that have a very high content of CBD, but also contain the other hundred or so cannabinoids with that CBD extract so that you can benefit from all of the cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant without, again, experiencing the psychoactive effects of THC. Now, when it comes to dosage of CBD, it's going to be largely dependent on your method of consumption. And there are two primary ways of consuming CBD, and that is one by orally consuming it. And then the second way of consuming CBD is going to be by inhaling it. Now, when you consume it orally, you're going to need to consume more CBD because of the lower bioavailability of the CBD when you consume it orally. However, when you inhale it, there is a much higher, almost a doubling effect of the bioavailability 
bioavailability of the cannabinoids when you inhale it. So if you're looking for a purely economical way to consume CBD, um, inhalation of a full spectrum extract via a vaporization is probably going to be your best bet. Now, before we close out this video, I do think it's important to point out some of the research that's being done on CBD in animal models. And there's actually a lot of promising research that's being done in animals right now, including immune function and even cancer research. And a lot of this research is actually very promising. However, it hasn't reached a point where it's got gotten to human clinical trials yet, so I'm going to hold my opinion on that research until some of that comes to fruition. All right, guys, that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know there's probably going to be a ton of questions that come out of this video, so please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below, and I assure you that I will get to it and hopefully answer some of your questions later on. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.